Hello and welcome to this edition of the Halcyon Show. My name's Long Risley and I'm going to be your host for this episode. Ultimate Racing 2D, a game by Applamazing. I didn't read that, you read that. A game that was released on the 24th of May 2018. It's currently priced on Steam at around three and a half to five pounds. Kind of everything it says on the tin, really. Ultimate Racing 2D, it's a 2D racing game. Top down, if you've played the original Grand Theft Auto, you'd be very, very familiar with the gaming mechanics. Albeit, what took me about this game isn't, I mean, the polish on it isn't the best, okay? You'll, you'll be struck immediately by the, it almost has a, a very 2D nature to it, that much is true. What struck me about this game is the level of depth in the game in terms of how many cars there are to use, the racetracks that have been at least attempted to have been copied, the variations in the different races, the variations in the different campaigns, and the smoothness of the racing itself. This is a brilliant little racing game, it has to be said. Now, again, nothing earth-shatteringly original as far as racing games are concerned. Again, if you played maybe some of the old uh, original Micro Machines, for instance, again, GTA, that's a good example of the top-down. The thing with those games, though, is I always felt a distinct lack of control with those games. I always felt like, no matter how well I got to know a vehicle, I'd still find a way to crash. And I guess that part of the fun of those games is crashing and spinning out, and there's a... You know, you're racing against other people and part of the fun is crashing out, like Mario, but you, you get what I mean. This game, though, I'm reminded of G uh, Gran Turismo in the sense that once you master it, it doesn't then che cheat you out of wins by feeling cheap. If you learn how to race within its confines and you get used to the skill levels within each car, each set of vehicles, each race, um, each racetrack that it presents to you, it feels smooth, it feels satisfying, the speed feels realistic for the amount of time that you're gonna be taking to get used to each vehicle. So uh, the Formula One cars feel like Formula One cars, the drag races feel like drag races, the muscle cars feel like muscle cars, the tractors, yes, there's tractors in this game, feel like tractors. The best way I could describe it to you is imagine if GTA's vehicles were all plucked out of the game and they set them all against the backdrop of actual legitimate racing. And just little things like the details of the tracks, for instance, the apexes of the corners, the fact that you slow down when you hit the sand traps, the tire degradation. Now, it's again, these, these mechanics aren't the deepest. I'm not here to say that they're deep as a real life Formula One simulator, but they're much deeper than a lot of the racing games you're gonna find on Steam at the moment, at least from my perspective. I've played a fair few racing games since I started reviewing, re reviewing games. This one has, the most well-rounded racing feel. Whenever I'm thinking of playing a racing game, this is the one I think of booting up because, again, the gameplay is just so responsive, tactile. It has a feel to it. You can feel your way through corners once you get used to cars. You can set pretty much everything within the game. So, for instance, if you set the, com uh, the, the campaign mode, you can go through the tracks, you can set up how many qualifying laps you want to do. If you want to do any practice laps, then you also have the race itself. You go through the ranks. Uh, depending on your performance within the races, you're graded and, and given points accordingly that you can then use to buy the next set of cars. Now, an interesting thing with the campaign in this game is that you have to basically rebuy a set of cars every time you progress. So even though you might have had a really good performance, about the best performance, you may still be hindered by the fact that you've got to then buy a substandard vehicle compared to the very best ones. The stats within the vehicles can vary. So even within the vehicles themselves, you're going to have variations in speed, grip, durability, uh, acceleration, things of that nature. So this game, really where it excels is every aspect of racing the developer has thought of and tried to put towards the overall experience. How fast the cars move, how they feel going through the corners, how they feel once the tires start degrading, how the tracks feel, how fast they want the game to play. Because again, one of the problems with these top town types of games is that trying to preempt the corners, even when you've got a feel for the track and you know sort of what's coming and you know sort of how the vehicle's gonna handle through the corners at certain speeds, you still never feel like you never, it's, you almost have to overcompensate and slow down too much or you have to press and just hope that the vehicle's gonna make the corner. This game, for whatever reason, I'm not even quite sure how the game pulls it off, you always feel like you've got a chance of making the race. I, I always, I felt great racing in this game. 
And again, that's one of the best compliments I can pay to a racing game, is that if you enjoy the mechanics of racing itself, if it provides good challenge, even in the event that you do crank down that difficulty level, which I'm guilty of doing from time to time, this game still presents you with a challenge in the sense that the CPU is not going to let you get away that easy. It's going to press you. It's going to let you know easily that sometimes if you do a pit stop, for instance, you have to change tyres, which is, again is an aspect of this game that other racing games neglect. If you do it too early, you're going to then be holding on and you're going to be losing grip going through the corners in the latter part of the race. Whereas if you time it correctly, you'll be hunting down the CPU because that will get the jump on you, but then you'll be hunting it down. And that thrill of the race is in this game in a way that I've not really felt with other racing games that I've played and reviewed. In fact, I think I've only reviewed maybe one or two of the racing games because other racing games that I've played just simply aren't up to standard with that thrill of speed, which is what racing games really do need to focus on here. As far as, the depth, again, the depth of content, absolutely fantastic. Soundtrack, probably lacking, and the UI and everything about the game has Again, it doesn't have the most amazing look for it. And I think that's where some people will be turned off with this game, is that the aesthetic of the game is, is lacking a little bit. It lacks any kind of flamboyance. If I was going to equate it to something, it feels like... It feels like an internet-based design. But on a, with gameplay that would be befitting of any console at the moment. I feel like if you gave this game a bit of a facelift and... Ironically enough, given the title, gave it more of a three-dimensional feel. This game would be unbelievable to play. Like, just the aesthetics of it all, getting the uh, the, the sound of the engines, because, again, the, the, the soundtrack is dialed down, so the engines, they don't sound like engines, they sound like, you know, Atari-style engines, if you, for lack of a better phrase. The graphics, though, I don't want to be too hard on them, though, because while they're fundamentally basic, there's plenty of detail in this game, like the tracks themselves have tons of foliage, uh, they have uh, different details on the sides of the tracks, like the boats in the, um, in the Monaco Grand Prix. Again, different tracks themselves that replicate real race tracks of the world, so if you have prior knowledge of racing, you're going to have fun going around these tracks, especially with these kinds of race cars that don't really take a tremendous amount of damage, but still provide good challenge. Who would I recommend this game to though? Hardcore racing game fans probably are going to think this is a little basic for their liking, but anyone that's after a casual racing game that's going to provide them a degree of challenge, but tons of content and room to improve as a player, and is a fan of the top-down racing style, this game is absolutely perfect. It's brilliant, really good, and good value for money. It's currently at 50% as of the time of this review. So it stands to reason it's going to stay, it's going to fluctuate a little bit. It's been out for a couple of years now, so why not pick it up? It's, it's a good little racing game, it's got tons to do, it feels good, and it's got all the quintessential racing elements that you need in a game like this. So, Ultimate Racing 2D. Have you played it? If not, what are your thoughts on racing games in general, specifically those of a top-down variety? Do you enjoy them or do you not enjoy being able to see where the corner is as you come up to it to be able to negotiate it correctly? correctly. Leave it in the description below because I'm torn. I quite like top-down races but nothing quite like drifting around a corner with the, the, the in the cockpit view. There's something just so deliciously satisfying about there, isn't there? Um, some of you are the racing games as well. What are some of your favorite racing games of the past or the present or ones that you're looking forward to as well? Leave me your thoughts in the comments section below. In the meantime though, thank you very much for watching this edition of The Housing Show. Please like, share and subscribe and check out some of the other content creators in the description below. You can bet your ass they're producing content at the moment for... No, I can't think of a reason why we're all stuck indoors. You think of it. Um, also check me out on Twitter, I'm usually tweeting stuff over there, and I think I did a Twitch the other day, I think, because I don't know, I can't check. Um, and yeah, I've been your host, Lauren Risley, this has been 2D Racing, Ultimate 2D Racing, Ultimate Racing 2D, gets it right the third time. Wow, I'm bad at this reviewing lark, but it's a good job I look good in this jacket. Hope you're taking care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next episode of The House Insure.